Velo builds, I think they follow me on Instagram. So they cool. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> I think that, that should be Chris. Because I was in contact with this guy called Chris. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so what's his question? So it's not a question. He say can't wait for this one to come out. But ah. since, since they are, uh, I'm assuming they're probably watching my video. Any feedback directly to Velo builds themselves? Um, or compliments? Or regrets? Dislikes? No. Uh, to me, I only got good things to say uh, for the for this frame. Yeah. Continue to keep the price low. And <laughs> by the uh, way, no obligation to say good things, uh. Nobody yeah. sponsors me. <laughs> yeah, okay. You ready? Yep, sure. <laughs> Sam, thanks for coming. Um, legendary car park, you're finally here after yes. so long. Uh, I got to know you through one of my group rides on Discord. So if you guys are not following me on Discord, you can join my weekly group rides. And uh, Sam was the very first one. I think you joined one of my first few rides and then yep. you started coming every time. Do you think that your performance has increased? Uh, definitely. <laughs> you know, going after, chasing after you and uh, JD, you know, the crazy group. Yeah. So a lot of people always complain that we don't uh, follow to our speed limit. <laughs> we, I always advertise as 35 kilometers rolling, but it never ends up at 35, right? <laughs> never, never. <laughs> uh, it's always like closer to 40 yeah. or 43. <laughs> uh, anyway, Sam, thanks for coming, man. Yeah. Uh, you thank have you, here thank a you. Velo Build VBR168. It's a 2021 year model. So a yes. Velo, Velo Build, I think I filmed one guy who had one in a cement gray. Yes. I think it's Velo Build. Um, is it relevant? It, his is a Tantan X. Oh, Tantan I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. That's the wrong one. Right, so maybe this might be the first, I think. Probably. <laughs> I, I think so. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, is this a Chinese bike? Yes, it is a Chinese bike. Um, yeah, I, I found it on a website somewhere. Uh, mainly from scrolling through forums. Okay. Then I, then I found this uh, Velo build. Quite a lot of people talking about it on the forum. Decided to go ch check it out. Not too bad. Frame very cheap. So yeah, decided to go for it. <laughs> right. Are you a COVID cyclist? Yes, I am a COVID cyclist. Uh, so I started somewhere August 2020. Mm. Yeah, but um, I was mainly a runner. Lah. So I was training for like marathons. Then uh, my brother-in-law, he bought his road bike. Started poisoning me. Mm. <laughs> so no, so I started off with um, Polygon. Polygon Helios is an alu, alu frame, alu shallow wheels, but I mean it, it works ah. So you know, just go and ride. Mm. Uh, struggling to keep up, and then when it was going at like when they were chunging and then I was just drafting behind like maybe forty. And then because I my, my stem then was like so short, it was like sixty or something. And then I think with shallow wheels, it's not so stable. You're like so teachy. Okay, it's like, okay lah. Let's go and upgrade lah. <laughs> yeah, so um, after riding for some while, I decided to upgrade. So, you know, was looking around, you know, with uh, not so deep pocket budget, you know, but I still want a nice looking bike. Yeah. You know, because now it's the, the trend is fully integ integrated and then um, deep carbon wheel set. So, this was the things that I was looking for. Right. So, you know, scrolling through. I mean, I could have gone for uh, like second hand on carousel, but I think back then the price was like also quite quite crazy mm. uh, Resale market was higher than retail market, so I didn't really explore that and decided to no. Oh, why why not go for a Chinese frame? Right. Um, yeah. Talk us through the process of buying a Chinese frame. So this I'm assuming this uh, company Velo Build it's all online, right? Yes. You can't get it from a local store here. No, no, no. Uh, so, it's all online. It's actually. Um, I think Velo built themselves, they kind of like a distributor. Uh, they probably also take stock from some other um, uh, manufacturers. manufacturers. Yeah. So I was researching, you know. So there's this forum, quite, quite interesting. It's called uh, China, China Town. Yeah. <laughs> China Town. Uh, so racist, man. <laughs> that sounds so racist. C H I N E R T O W. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so in this forum, they were all discussing about all Chinese bikes. So, Chinese frame, then the various uh, various manufacturers. So, they're, they're talking about this Tantan as well. They know the previous guy. And some other Hong Fu, Ding Fu. 
uh, some of these other manufacturers lah, which you know, probably some of them are OEM manufacturers for other big brands. I, I do not know, but um, you know, researching through RS, you know, all these forums, all these talks has been going on for very long. You know, since like 2015, there's already people talking about it. Mm. So you know, I think over the years, if there is if they're really trash, I mean, people have made noise about it. So I say, hey, since they are around for some while, uh, and there are good reviews about the bike especially for this model so the the forum was like i think at least over 70 pages of uh, forum discussing about the bike a lot of people posting reviews so i read through everything then okay lah <laughs> let's 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 go for it so i went to the website so they have you no know, all their different frame models um you can choose the frame you want uh you no know, this brake rim brake they have you know, various sorts you can choose the handlebar option you the handlebar size lah, so your stem length, your width. Um, then you can customize your paint color. So you no, know, to customize your paint color, you add on, I think about an extra. Can't remember. I think seventy five or is it fifty USD? Yeah, oh yeah. So this frame, uh, you, the last I checked uh, was uh, four seven nine USD. The frame. Yeah, for the frame. With frame the pose. Frame, seat, pose, handlebar. Right. And uh, stem. Yeah, yeah, stem. So this is a integrated uh, handlebar with oh, the yeah. stem and mm. yeah. Um, so four hundred seventy nine bucks. Yeah. Uh, excluding damn shipping and all this uh, Excluding oh. shipping. Uh, and excluding the pin. So if four seven nine, it's uh, for a black, no, mm. uh, just pure matte black look. Mm. Yeah, that's USD. So uh -huh. you can do your own conversion. Do you think you're the only one in Singapore with this bike? <laughs> I don't think so because in the forums when I was reading through, some of them were mentioning they are from Singapore or something. Uh, yeah, so but you know, didn't didn't talk about meeting up or contacting <laughs> that guy <laughs> la, but. And one interesting fact is that you built this entire bike by yourself. Uh yes, correct. How, how correct. the hell do you even do that? <laughs> Uh, learn off, watch YouTube video, watch a lot of YouTube video. Oh then you go and research, okay, how to install bottom bracket, you know, you know, what is PP, uh, PF86. Oh my goodness. That's so, yeah, it's a lot off, of. Hats off to you, man. A lot of research. I think the previous guy, you know, uh, the one with the Tantan, -tan, yeah. I think he also mentioned about it, right? You know, oh it's God. a lot of research to do. So, you know, what would fit with uh, the frame? Um, yeah, and because you are buying something that you, you don't see for yourself, right? So you have to depend on reviews. Oh. Mm. Yeah, so I you know, did a lot of research, read a lot of reviews. Uh, so it kind of convinced me that I think this would be okay. Is there uh, a warranty on the frame? I think two years, but it wasn't a consideration, uh, to be honest. Because if it's trash, it's only it, like 500 bucks. Yeah, yeah. it's trash. La. <laughs> <laughs> Probably I don't want to go back. To, so you to were willing again. to take that risk? Like yeah, yeah. If it comes, it breaks, and you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, how long did it take until you arrived? Any issues along the way trying to get it here? Uh, not really. I mean, so I settled the shipping myself. You could have gone with them to help you ship, but it was rather expensive. It's about 100 and 106, 100 USD or something around those lines. Then you have to pay a uh, tax. So uh, I use some other uh, shipping company. It was slightly cheaper Then um, Yeah hmm. So what was the question again? <laughs> Sorry I, I forgot but, uh, uh, yeah. any, any issues uh, Getting uh, so it shipped here Delays No stuff like not that? really It arrived in about Two weeks Three weeks There about Okay No Not much issue So okay So when it came uh, Packaging was alright uh, But firstly you know my first impressions taking out wow, so light yeah. But okay, so this is my first carbon frame. So uh, I, I didn't I don't have expectations lah, but okay. So I check, you know, inside looks okay. Because you have seen reviews ma, of uh, of other carbon bikes, how and uh, when those bike builders build a bike, then you know some they'll show the inside, you know, what what is it supposed to look like. So I started seeing okay, inside looks yeah, looks fine. The bottom bracket area, you know. Visually, don't look out of shape. <laughs> yeah, so looking at the quality of it, 
I mean, I'm, I'm convinced in a sense that I think it's worth the risk lah to, to, to take. Um, probably some finishing could have been better. Such as? Um, it looks pretty damn good from, from here. Like, uh, maybe like this, I mean the, the, the pain lah, the pain could have been a little bit nicer if I'm, but I'm nitpicking lah, mm, <laughs> to mm, be honest. Mm. Uh, oh, that, but there was one uh, issue with the during the installation of the front derailleur. Because this is mechanical, so I have to route the the cable up, and somehow I had a lot of difficulty uh, putting the uh, cable into the cable stop, which you no, know, uh, I had to install uninstall the cable stop, and then I think. Uh, I had to file a bigger hole in the cable stop so that you know, I can slide my cable through or something like that. Mm. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, I managed to get it fixed. Uh. So maybe you know, with this kind of uh, frames, maybe be expected, expect to you know, do some maybe touch up or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, for the price you pay, I'm not complaining. <laughs> what, what is the, uh, the, the, the idea behind this paint color? What, what, how would you describe this paint? Oh, so this uh, is chameleon green uh, in matte finishing. Mm. Yeah, so I just told... So uh, when... Uh, in, in Velo Build's website, right? So I was talking to the, uh, the guy by email. I mean, you can email him, you can WeChat him. Um, so he did show us... I mean, there's a list of you know, different paint schemes that is available. So yeah, this... Mad chameleon caught my eye. La. It was one of the um, options. Options, yeah. So, you know, when people order and then place their own color scheme, so after, after that he would like post and then you can you know, refer, then he will tell you what color scheme this is. Mm, okay. Yeah. So, was it's like it? a catalog of sorts. Right. Yeah. Were you happy with the color when it came out? Yeah, yeah, I'm very happy. Okay. Uh, what I wanted. La. Right. Uh, mm, um, Mad chameleon, yeah. Okay. What is the frame size and how do you determine that this was the frame size for you? Okay, so this is uh, size 52. I am 170. Uh, not too sure about my insim. I think it's 79 or 80, somewhere around there. Um, so, I was reading in the forum. So they were saying this, I mean, if you can see, this looks somewhat similar to the SL7. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they were saying the geometry is similar to the SL7. So, okay, if... So I went to the specialized website, you know, see my height, you know, in seam, then okay, they recommended 52. So since it's the same kind of geometry, then yeah. Mm, okay. Um coming coming back to you fixing the bike up, uh, yeah. how long did it take you to fix this whole and to assemble this bike? Well, I think quite long. <laughs> uh, a month? Um at least two, three weeks. Okay. Um, maybe because I was installing, then um, have to realize you are missing one part, then you got to order one part, then oh. wait for it to come. Then some things you're not too sure, then you install, install, then after that you uh, research, go and research how to do it. <laughs> okay, then try again, hands yeah. on again, then research again, hands on again. Yeah, so I think, but the most tedious part was the cable routing. Mm. Yeah, because uh, I want it fully integrated. Having to route the hydraulic cables and the mechanical gear, uh, gear cables, everything through the uh, handlebar and then through down through the stem and the headset area. Well, it was quite a pain. Yeah, <laughs> it was quite a pain. Uh, but it looks nice, so. <laughs> yeah. Usually, um, okay. I'm gonna pick on the bottom bracket. Uh, do you think does it creak? Is it? compliant is it no. fits nicely so far it, because this i'm using the uh, press fit treaded? it's supposed to be a press fit but it's the threaded kind of press fit so very simple to install you know you just have the two tools and then you just screw it in so it's just like a you just screw it in right yeah it's not press fit at all. okay yeah so uh so far so good no creaks and yeah it's simple to install mm. no no complaints on the bottom bracket part when, when fixing up the bike, uh, so I'm assuming like you just said just now, the hardest part was the, the cable routing. Yeah. Anything else that is you find a bit tough 
because I'm a DIY guy. Yeah. Uh, I get the satisfaction of building my own my own stuff. Um, I, I find I, I I have no idea how the hell to route cables. <laughs> uh, I, I the most satisfying part for me was the bottom bracket installing bottom brackets. I think that was quite fun for me to do. Uh, the bottom bracket. It was relatively easy lah. The bottom bracket. Yeah. Uh, the hardest part, or oh, that I took quite some time, would be bleeding the bricks. Mm. Yeah. So no experience with bleeding it before. So, you know, first time did it. Yeah, why still spongy? Oh, retry. You know, you thought you had to burp the 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 brakes. We try again. I'm this gonna assume you watched the part two video. Part two video. <laughs> um, there is uh this there. guy, Oz cycles. Aussie cycles. Aussie cycle. Yeah, Aussie cycles. that's awesome, man. What? And well, this guy is, is awesome because he, he gives a lot of DIY tips. Yeah. Uh, he really teach you how to, and very practical uh, guy, uh, teach you how to you know, wax your chain. Yeah, yeah, I watch his videos on the chain. Yeah, and chain <laughs> waxing. So I learned from him as well how to wax my chain, how to you know, clean your chain, you know, put in degreaser, petrol, <laughs> methylated spirits, <laughs> and then go put it in your slow cooker with the yeah, wax. Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, my chain is uh, immersive wax. Uh, really like the performance because it's really quiet. Yeah, uh, you said the, the wax is your own uh, home home brewed wax. What yeah, else, so we ordered. Uh, so me and my brother in law they ordered the wax from I think Shopee and then also the PTFE powder. So the re- recipe is I think on uh, All Cycles website or something like that. So we got it off him. Uh, yeah, so just put it in, stir with the put the uh, powder into the hot wax. Stir it, then yeah, you put your chain in. Wow, awesome. So then, far, it works well. Yeah, so far it works well. I would re-wax it every maybe four, five hundred km. It's quite long. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I, mm. I like, because it's clean. Uh. Mm. Yeah, uh, don't have those dirty chain marks on your yeah, leg. Yeah. yeah. Um, any, any problems with the frame? I know you mentioned the paint. Anything else structural-wise? Structural-wise... Mm, no. All good, including the handlebar oh, stem, I, headset. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of problems, but... Uh, <laughs> How long have you owned the bike first? Okay, so I've uh, I built this last year, August. Okay, so you've got some time in already. Yeah, so I've, I I don't ride that much. Uh, clocked about 1,002 km hmm. on this bike. Hmm. So uh, far, yeah. it works. Uh, not, not much problems. Lah. Uh, Probably, oh, when I first installed, I had issue with a headset play. The virus is because uh, I didn't cut my stem short enough. The stereo tube? Ah, uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, stereo tube yeah. short enough. So uh, that's why it wasn't compressing enough. Yeah. Then uh, after that, I realized I was fiddling around why, why, why is that a play it's so irritating? Mm. <laughs> yeah, so I realized, okay, I'll just try, just cut another one two mm worth of uh, the stereo tube yeah. and then yeah fix the headset play yeah, issue usually you got to leave a bit like a small little gap there so that it compresses if you cut the stereo tube flush with the stem there's no compression that yeah, can happen yeah yeah so exactly um so yes yeah, this this kind of things you you learn along the way you right? learn along the way first time bike builder you learn so respect man <laughs> uh, it it really takes time so I wouldn't recommend it to someone who uh, has uh, no patience to do the kind of DIY mm. thing. La. I mean, it's like a passion project la, to, to get a bike built up. Yeah. My, 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 the way of, I, of me doing things is I, I try to do it myself first, watch videos and stuff. Only when I screw up, I send it to my bike man. <laughs> <laughs> I, at least I get some value out of it rather than just bringing the bike and send it to the shop and you know it fix it up for me. Yeah. I, I don't gain anything from that by paying him money. But I know a lot of people do that because they don't have time to, yeah. do, to fix up their bike. Uh, okay, so let's move on to wheels. These are Tao Pao wheels. Yeah, from Tao Pao. Correct. Why? Uh, why? Because uh, so I was looking around. So the Velobit also sells the sells the wheel sets as well. Uh, the price also very competitive, uh, but they, did, they didn't have the hubs that I wanted. So this is the hub smith hub. Um, reason why? Because it's mainly because I didn't want to go for the other hubs that they were they were selling. It was Novo Tech and Powerway or something like that. Uh, also, also, yeah, basically it's due to cost lah, no budget. Is hub smith a, a China brand? Uh, it's Taiwan. Taiwanese, okay. Yeah. So um, I didn't want to go for this Novotech and 
power way because uh, I read reviews weren't that good and I didn't like the, the design of it. It was a red colors, a bit of red deco on the hubs, which I didn't like. So I decided to go for this Hubsmith. Uh, I mean, still within the lower price range. Uh, definitely cheaper than your DT's, uh, DT350, which I was also considering, but you know. I, I, since I didn't go for full China one, I, I, I just go budget. Mm. So How much are these wheels? These wheels, probably about 800. Okay. Yeah. Any or, issues with it? Uh, again, is it 50 or 60 mm? This is, they are 60 mm. Okay. Um, so far, no, no, no issues. issues. But again, my first, my first carbon wheel set. Yeah. I, I do not know. I, I don't have something to compare against. Yeah. Uh, but comparing to a alloy shallow wheel wheel set. <laughs> Too much difference. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So my first time riding on, you know, uh, in a sense, full carbon build versus an alloy. Why you you definitely feel the difference, ah. This is much more comfortable, I think, because you know it absorbs the you know, road vibrations and and all. Mm. Yeah. So okay. happy with the ride, lah. Right. And group set standard uh, Altegra R8000. Nothing much to talk about. Yep. The pedals are funny. Yes. What pedals are these? So this, uh called uh, lollipop pedals <laughs> in, on AliExpress. So, um, got this idea from another YouTuber. He's called Trace Velo. Yeah, he does a lot of China stuff. Yeah, so Trace Velo, this guy, cool dude. Uh, his whole channel is about reviewing uh, Chinese AliExpress products. So he's always on AliExpress <laughs> finding new things to review. Yeah. So, yeah, he also built his own China frame. I watched a lot of his videos, probably also inspired by him to, you know, or dare to take the risk to buy a China frame to 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 ride la. So mm. yeah, got inspiration from him. Um, these pedals, performance-wise, uh, I I like it, but uh, prior to using it, you have to twinkle twinkle a bit with it, uh, because initially when you start to clip in, it was very very tight. So there is this C clip which I had to, uh, in a sense, uh, release the tension a little bit so that it'll be easier to clip it. Mm. So this, this information, I also got it from uh, Trace Fellow mm. when he reviewed it, then he realized, okay, yeah, you got to do that. So yeah, so when it came, you know, released the, the C clip and then I realized, oh yeah, now it's quite uh, easy to clip in. And because it's both uh, dual sided, I mean, uh, you can clip in on both, both sides so I don't need to like <laughs> fumble <laughs> around on the uh, on, on the, the yeah, Shimano, no, no, Shimano look, <laughs> look pedals. I was using the look ones for a good six, seven, eight months. The Kyo, is it? Yeah, and I still have problem <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, I changed to this uh, and yeah, it's uh, it's good, it's nice, okay. and it's cheap lah, right. compared to your speed plays, mm. which are like you no. Know, to 300 bucks or something. Yeah. The last component of the bike is the saddle, uh, OEM specialized yes. saddle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cheap saddles from AliExpress. I think cost like 30 bucks or something. Mm, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's light. So that's why I got it. Okay. Uh, lastly, the weight. Weight. Um, with everything on, it's about 8.4, 8, around 8.4. Quite heavy, 8.4. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, I, I guess I, I'm so not too sure where all the weight is coming from. Probably from the wheel set. Yeah, uh, maybe the frame is heavy. Frame itself, probably a bit heavier. Mm. Uh, yeah. What is the price? Total build, uh, it's about 3.5. Very affordable. Affordable, yeah. Um, mm. But for 3.5, you could possibly also get uh, on, on carousel second hand uh, a similar bike but maybe a known brand name like for example giant propel so i actually also bought a giant propel i mean, I, I had the i bought the frame and the wheel sets so it's a giant propel advanced don't know don't know what mm. so it, it came without the group set so it's just the frame frame handlebar and uh, the wheels and then i fitted on the group set uh, when I purchased a group set fitted on, total cost 
at around uh, 3.5, 3.6 then yeah so it, the cost is about the same actually to this bike so if you know you're looking for other options this might not actually be the most economical but i mean i had the fun of building it lah, so do you think you'll stick around to this bike or you'll get a or do you think you'll outperform this bike and you'll get something else i wouldn't dare to say i outperform <laughs> the bike uh, Oh, there's like a limitation to the bike like I, it I, can only go up to here i'm not too sure man because i i don't think i'll test the limits of the bike la. Mm. i am at most now uh i mean if on a solo ride tmcr average 32 33 uh i mean i mean if you're drafting you guys it's different story la. drafting la, can go 40 plus <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh, I'm not too sure, man. How how will you define uh, you know, outperforming the bike? Yeah. I, I don't think it will perform too poorly, la, to be honest. Yeah. What yeah. are your dislikes? Uh, Any dislikes on the bike? Dislikes? Uh, nothing much because everything I already considered when I was building the bike, every component is like purchased on my own end. Mm. But if you're talking about, you know, no budget constraint then i'll change the whole bike <laughs> <laughs> what is your dream bike uh, honestly haven't really gone to think of a dream dream bike uh van should be one not too fond of the pinarellos yeah too curvy for you yeah uh i think you mentioned about the luke 795 Five Blade rs RS. yeah it looks really nice so it looks damn arrow yeah, yeah that's a nice one as well mm. Uh, basically, any aero bike lah. Okay, we'll move on to the Instagram Q&A. Okay, sure. If you guys want to ask your questions, follow me on Instagram, you can submit your questions via my Insta story. So, Sam, the first question. What is your opinion or how is the build quality of this frame? What will you rate it out of 10? For me, out of 10, I'll give it a build quality and eight maybe mm. also because i haven't tried like high-end you know s-works frames or you know high-end pinarello frames i haven't tried it before i do not know how stiff those frames are versus this uh, this this frame so i can't really compare but uh what i feel um i i think it, it writes quite fine uh, yeah mm, okay so yeah eight, eight over ten all right yeah um would you recommend these wheels to other people? Uh, or are there other better options? I mean, now with the wind space and you know, uh, elite wheels, I, I think maybe you could pay a bit more and you know, get something which a lot of people have reviewed before. And you know, uh, you know, there are a lot of people reviewing the wind space and I think recently there's this Elite Wheels Drive something I see is all on YouTube <laughs> and I think probably they are sponsoring people probably yeah, yeah. and they are all giving good reviews so maybe they are paid to say that <laughs> you never know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and it's a, a little bit more a few hundred more maybe worth going for that mm. I don't dare to recommend because uh, for me I, 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 I dare to take the risk uh, to, to buy this and build but uh, to recommend, I don't know. I don't. Okay, I'm, I'm going to assume you didn't throw the wheels by yourself. It came through. Oh yeah, already. I didn't throw it. Uh, Did so it get it was untrue? Really no, I so I yeah, put it on the stand. It was rather true la. Okay. So that was the first few things that I I, I checked. It's a clean chest, running on clean chest. Oh, uh, it's tipless. Ooh, tipless. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, it came. So these rims are supposed to be tubeless ready. Uh, so I just had to apply my own rim rim tape. Uh, the tubeless rim tape. Then yeah. Mm. Uh, well, this I'm running GP 5K, so what well, to mount these tires on is <laughs> <laughs> dude. It took me so many times. I get so many, much, so much blisters exactly, on my palm. Exactly, exactly. Push it up. I, I had to had help to you know someone to hold the <laughs> hold the rim so I can <laughs> you know, use a lot of force to get get the uh, tires seated. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, recommend uh, you know, do your own research review. Uh, performance wise is fine no qualms great price uh, but no if you can accept the risk la, mm. yeah. okay. there's definitely some risk there that you know and uh, China's Chinese wheel sets right. uh, and kind of unknown brand so 
Okay. Yeah, up to you. The next question is uh, from Velo Builds themselves. <laughs> from Velo Builds themselves? Yeah. Velo Builds, I think they follow me on Instagram. So they cool. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> I think that, that should be Chris, because I was in contact with this guy called Chris. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, what's his question? So it's not a question. He say can't wait for this one to come out. But ah. since, since they are, I, I'm assuming they're probably watching my video. Any feedback directly to Velo Builds themselves? Um, or compliments? Or regrets? Dislikes? No. Uh, to me, I only got good things to say uh, for the for this frame. Yeah, continue to keep the price low. <laughs> and by the uh, way, no obligation to say good things. Uh. nobody yeah. sponsors me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, to be honest, I'm very happy lah with, with the the whole whole frame. Uh, and really, I I I think this is one of the cheapest frames I've seen. Okay, uh, why didn't you get Tantan -tan cycling frames? More expensive. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's. A little bit more, not too much more. Uh, maybe 150, 200 more for the frame. Mm. Uh, yeah, so I think this was the most, the, the cheapest option and where I could get proper reviews on, on it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, good job, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> the next question is, the person says that he heard that this headset gets loose any issues i know you said that it was loose because you didn't cut the stereo tube yeah but now that you've cut it does it still get loose so now that i cut it no issue with the headset the any play on it okay so far all okay. fine um so so uh, uh, the headset issue was is very common on the on the forums yeah so did they say why and what's the resolution uh there there are people talking about uh, different reasons and and why but i don't know why they cannot fix it la. <laughs> maybe they don't know <laughs> yeah, so you should tell velo build la. why velo build <laughs> your headset problem man i mean but this this is a build it yourself thing maybe it's it's a user user <laughs> the problem they didn't build it properly or something or like could that. it be that the the way the headset was manufactured is not just like your bottom bracket right it's not done properly it's it's not to, um to be honest i mean if if that was the case, then I would I would still be having a headset play issue. Okay, right do now. you have to tighten the top bolt very tightly so that it doesn't shake? Usually, that's that could be a sign. You, normally, your top bolt you don't have to tighten it so hard. Uh, it's just meant to compress I the fork. According to, uh, like online, they give some uh, gen generic range on how what's your top supposed to be. So top it's like set. what five, four, six? I think. Six, maybe okay. I can't. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I try to follow some of these guidelines. Uh, on Actually, you know how I do it. Like I remember someone told me this that uh, he, my, my, my one of my friends, he doesn't use a top top wrench, but he does it by feel. So he told me the top bolt when you do it, as long as you feel a bit of resistance, that should be done. Because ah, the purpose okay. of the it's just meant to compress your fork up, right? Yes. And you don't have to tighten it all the way. If not, you'll get stuck. I see. Yeah. Um. Well, to me, I I talk it. Uh, a little bit tighter than usual maybe because i had the impression that if i don't do it i'll have to have the plane <laughs> but i never tried it loose before i mean yeah. like not too tight yeah but uh, anyway there wasn't play after i went to further cut down the uh, stereotype stereotype yeah would you consider getting a power meter ah yes and if yes uh, which one uh i was considering looking through carousel for power meters but it would mean i mean there are so many different options i could get a pedal base no uh crank base i i guess the cheapest most uh, economic version would be to have to replace the left left crank one left crank power meter yeah, so i just need to replace that i think it costs maybe three four hundred mm. yeah um considering yeah so yeah. but if i change that then i have to change my uh, cycling computer <laughs> oh yeah uh, i'm using the, this zos one which uh, it does not accept the power meter readings this is a basic matrix yeah basic one except your speed sensors and all cadence sensor but yeah it does not accept the power meter hmm. uh yeah it means i have to change uh, that so yeah hmm. probably in a pipeline not too soon right uh yeah oh then i had recently i started on a trainer so yeah with the trainer i can already see my power what i'm outputting so i i'm i i was happy with that so that's why i wasn't really thinking of getting a power meter on on the bike itself mm, yeah. okay 
were there any tolerance issues on the frame such as caliper mounting surface not being flat so the guy who came on the interview the tantan -tan cycling he said he had to sand down a bit of the the area where you mount the caliper because it wasn't straight or wasn't flat you yep. had that such issues or any tolerance um, issues around the frame to be honest i don't know because don't really have any uh roto rubbing issues right now mm. yeah so i guess it's fine okay why okay this is the last question okay a lot of people ask, uh, I, I acknowledge all the questions there are a lot of questions asking about sl7 and uh, how does it write obviously i no point asking the question because you have not written sl7 the yeah. last question then is um oh my god i forgot <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the last question is The gold chain, does it give you extra power? <laughs> <laughs> is, this a KM, is this a KMC? Yeah, it's a KMC SL Yeah mm. I mean, it just looks good lah, to me Yeah Because, you know, I, I have this gold sticker and then Okay, I think a gold chain would be nice How, how did you get the gold decals on the, on the name? Yeah, so gold decals, got it off Shopee uh, Just a few bucks Okay. You just type your, I mean, you order, put your name in the remarks, and then they'll just send it to you. Right. Things from Indonesia. Okay. Any last things that you want to address the people who mm. might be watching this video? Or anything you want to give them heads up if they want to get this bike? If they want to get this bike, be prepared to... Uh, if you're going to build it yourself, then, yeah, uh, spend a lot of time doing research and on how to build the bike. Uh, read reviews, uh, read... Uh, the Chinatown <laughs> forum. <laughs> I mean, they gave a lot of tips. Uh, there's a lot of tips. I learned a lot from there. Then that's how I. I, I mean, without that forum, I would be lost on how to build this, like, mm. uh, on like some of the issues they encountered. Uh, yeah, mm. and but I would say, if you really are interested in getting a, if you want it brand new, getting a new bike, you want a new bike, brand new bike, then you could link to this. If not. You could possibly get someone something of a better value uh, on, on, on carousel. Like mm. what I mentioned is now the giant propel, which comes up to about the same price. Mm. Yeah, but in the end, I, I, sold, I sold that one away. Mm. Yeah, because uh, it you was chose a bit this too over small. The, the propel. Yeah, and I, I, I like this color. <laughs> the other color was like uh, not, not to my best liking. Yeah. Yeah, so in the end, I still stuck, stuck with this. Yeah. Do, do you go climbing with this bike? Uh, we forgot to ask about like uh, in terms of stiffness and all sort of crap. How is it? Yeah, so yeah, stiffness, I guess a lot of, that would be some people's concern or how, how stiff is the frame. But sadly, I cannot answer you guys. <laughs> uh, I do not know. I don't know how to gauge how stiff is the, fr uh, the frame is because I haven't ridden a high-end high -end, uh, frame. Uh. Yeah, so sorry, can't answer you guys. Can you climb with this? I haven't really gone climbing with this... Uh, haven't gone to Mount Faber. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, probably one day I'll go and <laughs> let you know. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Okay, uh, that is the end, but uh, before we wrap up, can you nominate one of your friends to come on my show? Publicly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, probably my brother-in-law, Jimming, who started poisoning me, poisoning me and started me with road cycling. Okay, <laughs> yeah, we'll okay. get in touch, man. <laughs> yeah, he, he rides a giant, giant propel. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Uh, Sam, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, really appreciate it, man. And yep. uh, I'll see you next week for a ride. Yeah, see you, see you. Thanks for organizing, organizing all the group rides and yeah, yeah, all, yeah. These, if you guys all the join, channels, all the videos. Yeah, yeah. Very informative to us uh, enthusiasts. Yeah. You guys want to join uh, my group rides, uh, it's on Discord and then you guys can just fill up your names and uh, remember to follow me and subscribe. And that is the end. Sam, thank you once again. Alright, thank you.